Hi everyone, Mike Doloff. I'm the Chief Revenue Officer at Inflow Communications. I have with me our President and CEO, Travis Dillard. Travis, say hello. Hello everybody. So talking today, kind of elaborating on a topic that we spoke about recently, which is kind of the state of the contact center technology landscape in 2019. I uh, want to pull out some themes and then where is this whole thing going, right? Because there's a lot of change going on. It's a pretty dynamic space right now and want to kind of recap a little bit of what we talked about last time. And if you haven't watched that video, check out the link to that. We've got it right here for you. Um, take a look at that and then we're going to then break down where's this, where's this train heading, right? This is a pretty interesting world. Where's it going? What are some of the themes that we think are going to win out and um, take shape over the next couple of years? So. With that, let's break down really quickly this graphic we put together. So we put together four quadrants, um, legacy on-premise contact center technologies, cloud incumbents, which have been doing cloud for uh, you know more say than 10 years, uh, cloud challengers who've been doing it for less than that, and then the CRM and ticketing space, which is really entering into that sort of more traditional contact center technology landscape now, all converging. So let's talk about kind of some of the key themes that we pull out of this um, and what we learned from it. So Kind of, I think, first and foremost, you've got this idea that Travis mentioned last time, and Travis, I know you're really passionate about it. Why don't you talk about what's the end of the contact center even mean for people? What are we seeing here? Well, I see contact center synonymous with call center, which was a, a term that died when people realize you're not just interacting with a brand with vo voice only, or like phone system, the word phone system died when UC came out. Now UC is getting long in the tooth, and it's more about collaboration, right? So I think the term contact center is really limiting, and now it's really about customer engagement platforms, how you engage with your customers on multiple channels, um, whether it's SMS and web chat and maybe email and voice and social media. Um, you know, <clears throat> contact center is no longer, in my mind, I could be wrong. Maybe it's a word that'll be here a decade from now. And, and I'll eat my words, but I think it's coming. Who, like you said on the last series, it, what's the name? What is it? What it, will it be called? You know, I put my money on customer engagement platform because you're looking at it's no longer just uh, a, a contact center anymore. It's, you know, that's why. And, and I think what's very symbolic with the death of the word contact center and is the entrance of, say, Salesforce saying, hey, I've got all these channels. I've got all the data. I've got all the intelligence. I've got all the analytics. Now I'm just adding voice. Right. And so. You, you, you know, that's a customer engagement platform. People are going to start, are not going to start calling Salesforce a contact center. So, you know, and, and again, CRM is not even really in, indicative of what's encompassing yeah. a customer engagement platform. So, yeah. I, no, I think it's good. I think another word that I'd throw into the mix for this is, you know, the buzzword that we hear a ton is customer experience, right? And I think that that's the sort of broad, broad area we're talking about that a lot of this lives under. Um, so yeah, I think some some new some new um, terms potentially get adopted. We'll see. We still I still hear a call center every once in a while, um, and, I, and I, I'm fine with it. We get it. But uh, but yeah, I think the contact center that's certainly shifting. We'll see what the semantics will will say. Hopefully, we can catch up with some good unified terms that we can be speaking the same language with with everybody globally soon. So that's I think one interesting um, theme from from what we're seeing in the landscape in 2019. So the next one. We're talking about where everybody comes from. This is what's really interesting. The wide range of pedigrees here that you're seeing, we obviously broke them into the quadrants. That's part of the pedigree. But you you don't just get um, this range of somebody that's coming from prem and putting their technology into cloud or somebody that's coming up uh, as a cloud, uh, purpose-built cloud in two, 2015 versus one that started in the cloud in 2003, let's say. It's a wide range of their capabilities and where they're coming from. They've built their tech stack and their lens on this right is built from that time frame where their software was architected from or where they're coming from as a space right like CRM and ticketing is coming at this completely from a different uh, lens than somebody that's coming at it really just specifically for the contact center piece um, and yet uh, and that's it, that's what's fascinating right so you're going to have a wide range in sort of the pedigree and the strengths of these different platforms converging into the space and so it's really useful if you're a consumer or buyer, right, to be mindful of that. What are the strengths? What's the background? But also just interesting from the industry perspective is that is a really wide range of pedigrees that is sort of all mixing together right now for the contact center technology space. Well, and you might see that where you look at, say, a cloud incumbent that's very sophisticated in a lot of your meat and potato contact center features, you know, wrap codes, um, et cetera. Whereas maybe your challengers have this fantastic open architecture and you can snap in third party 
um, ecosystem applications and with AI and conversation analytics and things like that. But then when you dig into it, maybe there's like two or three core contact center features that you're kind of scratching your head. I'm like, how do they miss that? But that's because that's not the world they came from. Yeah. You're also going to see that in, in the CRM side too, where, where perhaps, yeah, they're opening up these channels, but maybe there's something that you, as a, as a consumer of contact center software, you've used a particular feature for years and you just come to rely on it and all of a sudden it's gone. So you totally. have to be hyper diligent in the evaluation process and um, looking at the, you know, and also understanding where they come from. Totally. It's a good point. I'll just add one quick thing on that. I've talked to customers who gone going through contact center technology buying process, which again, it's a, there's a lot of people, a lot of stakeholders in an organization that are part of it, but also um, their assumptions for what everybody has the same basic capabilities of X or of Y aren't necessarily true, right? Like, like you're saying, you really need to vet out, does it have these things that I sort of take for granted that we use from our operations or analytics perspective? Cause Everyone's coming at this from a different space. And so it's well, been so, interesting to see and hear that. Yeah, and something else to add too, where is perhaps there's there's something that's, especially when you start integrating like say CRM and contact center technology, where the contact center might be weak in that area, the CRM might pick up the slack when it comes to like right. a, specific omni cha a specific channel or a specific way they route interactions. That's right, yep. Yeah, there's a lot of complementing here across this spectrum. So that's one other theme from this. The next one here, let's talk about um, where you've got kind of this cloud only or cloud in on-prem. And this is kind of highlighting again, the legacy on-prem in that upper left orange. Um, all of those folks have a prem technology stack, right? That's where they were working at for, you know, even to this day in many cases, but going back decades, um, that, was, that was the contact center technology, right? Now they've got a cloud um, solution as well. Sometimes that's built from the ground up. Sometimes that's taking what was prem and putting it into the cloud. Sometimes that's completely re-architecting the software or completely building it from scratch. It's a whole range in there, but there's some benefits, but also some challenges with, with those that those folks in that category have to deal with versus somebody that sort of was is cloud only, right? Certainly that's the direction everything's going is towards cloud. And if you've got some of the cloud incumbents or cloud challengers that build cloud only, they don't have some of that, um, let's just call it headache, right? if you will, of having to manage other systems or data. So there's some advantages, right? For these customers that have prem, they have a lot of big basic customers, um, but they also have to do investment in R&D and development in the platforms that they currently have, as well as new ones going forward in the cloud. Um, so it can make it tricky for those businesses to kind of juggle priorities. And we see that for sure day in and day out with some of those players. <clears throat> and then last point to kind of pull out of this is there's a huge range of maturity in here and we kind of touched on this already with that pedigree, right? Like these, some of these organ, some of these platforms are very, very mature in things that a call center would, would need, right? Wrap codes and skills-based routing, all these things. Others, they haven't even gotten to that yet, right? They have this maybe a really amazing omni-channel piece, but they're completely, let's just call it immature in some of the feature functionality in maybe a more traditional voice-centric call center. So you have this really wide range of where think where these companies are at with maturity in their products as well as their maturity as a company right some of these are very actively sort of set and they have all their ecosystem wfm wfo they've got all that established or other ones are saying we are best of breed for contact center just on this part right now and we've got an ecosystem of partners that we bring in to round out the solution there's a huge range of that and so you've got this really interesting mix of the stalwarts, the people that have been there forever and up and comers that are suddenly competing in, you know, uh, all size opportunities for, for winning con contact center technology uh, business. So it's really interesting. Travis, I don't know if you want to add anything on the, on that. Yeah, I, I would, I would just add that, um, you know, you can look at that as a pro and con, right? I mean, depending on what your particular needs are as an organization, you could look at a cloud incumbent, for example, and look at, you know, they've got pretty much everything that you need. They're more sophisticated and they're more voice-centric voice um, feature sets, um, but then there's some technology debt there, right? Whereas you could, so to say that in contact is wrong or right is, is really depends on the customer and, and what you're trying to accomplish. And so obviously in my mind, and I'm, I, I fail to see the, the longevity of premises-based contact centers over time because all the innovation's happening. I mean, when you, customers are going to have to differentiate. You're going to organizations are going to have to differentiate through things like AI, um, through conversation analytics, through you know these more sort of social media channels and some of these more forward-thinking features. 
all that's happening in the cloud, right? There's there's very little to any R and D or any of this innovation happening on prem, and so maybe some of these players in that orange circle would secretly agree, publicly disagree with me. But you know, so I think you're really going to see all the innovation happening in, in cloud 1.0, the incumbents, the challengers, and then obviously the CRM and ticketing space for customer yep. agent platforms. So let's let's transition as we wrap up here to kind of what are what are the trends that we're going to see right out? Like what's going to come out of this mix? Because it's pretty it's a pretty interesting. Um, melting pot of different different pedigrees, different maturity levels of different spaces that these different players have come from around the contact center. So let's talk for a minute about what some, some of these key trends are. So I think the first one let's hit here is the siloed technology that has existed in the past will go away, right? That's a, no, that's an, a non-starter for, for companies going forward. So this idea that our contact center is this piece of technology here that doesn't talk to these other core pieces of our business, that's, that, that idea doesn't fly in 2019 or, or shouldn't. There's still a lot of um, catching up, I would say, that companies have to do with this. But looking forward, at, like what Travis just said, you know, um, it's no longer an option, right? The, the contact center call center used to be sort of the behind the scenes, unglamorous, um, you know, sort of black ne box. Yeah, necessary, but not sort of heralded part of a company's, you know, uh, product or service. Well, it's really flipped. And again, there are, this is not going to apply in every circumstance, but now the customer experience is such a key part of building loyalty, building brand, uh, maintaining customers, all these kinds of things that that's put, push the contact center and that part of the technology in the forefront. It can no longer. And part of that is having good data and access to um, things so that when you, when you talk with your customer and you help your customer, you're not just saying, how can I help you? You know what you're helping them with type of things. And, well, and that's why I, Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Well, I say that that's why you can't silo your technology, right? That's why we're seeing these companies that are struggle operationally with keeping up with the expectations and demands of customers. Uh, a lot of times it's a silo technology problem, right? They're not thinking in terms of, they're thinking in terms of, we have all of our workflow and data and systems over here, but then we have our call center over here. And it's like, as we get in and talk, it's like, hey, these things need to be bridged a lot tighter. This, these things can't be siloed. You have to use this information you have here to improve the customer experience here. And these things go hand in hand in improving each other. It, it yep. improves the customer experience, also the employee experience, all of those things. Uh, so anyways, the, the silos, they got to go. They're going and they have to accelerate in your business. You need to get rid of them if you want to elevate and continue going forward. Sorry, Travis, chime in. Yeah, no, sorry. And I think that that's why, I mean, five years ago, we used to, or, you know, or even longer than that, you talk about how, you know, the novelty and the, how innovative it was to take your contacts and integrate it with your, your, your core ERP or your CRM system. Now it's like, if you're not doing that, you're missing the boat completely. Right. Um, and I feel like that's why, and I said this on the last series, I'm really bullish about the CRM side of things. Data is already there. It's already got it. You know, all your analytics are there. Um, your data is there. Um, it's more sophisticated, you know, and, and all your information and all the, the nuances about your customers are there. So that's why when they add a channel, I feel I think that's gonna those are gonna be the that's gonna be the categories to watch. But then it also comes back to analytics, right? Coming from a as an executive of a company, I don't wanna have to look at three different places to see how my business is operating. Why should I? There's no reason I should look over here in this black box to look at my contact center data and then look over here to see how my customer service levels are when it, or my customer satisfaction or my NPS scores or maybe my lead conversions if I'm an outbound call center. I should be able to I should be able to take all these data points, whether it's disparate systems and layering it on a BI tool or something like that and showing correlations, or if it's all just built in the same application like Salesforce. At the end of the day, the fact that you shouldn't have to be going around and looking at data and then trying to piece together correlations, that's, you know, that's, that's, last, that's the last decade for sure. Totally. Well, I think there's a lot of maturing to do in that space, but I agree that's one of the, I think that's, that is probably our next trend, Brendan, I think, if we've got it here on the, the slide. Data and analytics, yeah, those are going to win. I mean, again, this there's still a lot of growth, I think, to happen in this area because um, just the the concept of uh, you know voice of the customer and some of these areas around you know getting customer sentiment and information, some of that today like lives outside of the contact center and the contact center. You know, there's, there's this whole range of 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 data that we're trying to get to understand our customer experience that is not pulled together yet. Um, so I think again, yeah, just sort of highlighting as the technology trends go, this really sort of interesting blend. I think the the 
the technology stacks in the companies that figure out how to leverage data, customer data and, and analytics around that data are gonna win, right? And that's a theme that has continued to build, but we're starting to see newer roles in organizations um, where the data and analytics side of contact center is less just about um, average speed of answer and just sort of traditional call center metrics, contact center metrics. And now it's looking more broadly at things, how that impacts um, uh, revenue cycles in other parts of the business, how it impacts you know product teams, how it impacts uh, customer overall NPS score, health scores, all these other things. So this data analytics is becoming again, just like the contact centers, getting embedded in the larger fabric of the, the company, the data and analytics around that, doing the same thing. And the companies and platforms geared to that will win and will do well. And so to wrap us up here, kind of the last, I think, trend, we've talked a lot about this, but this idea of the open architecture, sort of ties in with the silo, the, the no more silo technology, whether or not that's a, a contact center that's truly one platform, right, for all channels, all data, or it's, it's tightly aligned um, best of breed platforms, I think a lot of that will shake out over the next decade, right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while for that to play out. But regardless of how exactly that plays out, this idea of an open ar architecture is going to be key. Right, the, I think that's a really a, a huge differentiator of why some of the cloud challengers have really taken off and gotten market share quickly, gotten into the hands of customers because they've come in and said, hey, we understand that you have a CRM system or you have a, a, a voice of the customer system or you have a ticketing system or you have all these other systems and processes you're using. No problem. Let's tie that together. Let's bring those together. Let's make your agent experience better by tying these systems together, whether it's at a um, sort of UI level or a back end level. And so that open architecture is a key, key piece. The, that's one of the um, sort of technology debt challenges I think that the legacy on-prem technology stacks have to deal with. How do they become open and um, the ability to sort of work with anything or everything, right? Whether it's a new channel or whether it's a different platform, that's some of the stuff that they have to, to wrestle with. But either way, that open architecture is absolutely key going forward. We see this more and more as an expectation of companies, right? They have different systems and they need to have those systems talking and working together. And that contact center needs to not be a bottleneck for that. Well, yeah, and I think also, which is a, I'm a, I'm a big believer and you can't be great at everything, right? Whether it's your service company or your technology player, you can't be a great CCAS player, but also excel in AI, right? Like someplace you got to pick what you're going to be good at and be really good at that and have an open architecture that can play with three or four other, um, say, ecosystem players or more. Same goes to, you know, vertically focused companies, right? I mean, what is a great tool for healthcare might not be great for credit unions and finance. So having that open architecture get, puts the power back in the, in, in the customer's hands to, to put the right technology stack together to meet their needs. Yeah. So th those are some of the predictions on the trends um, around the contact center technology. It's 2019. So in five years, we'll probably look back at our, our predictions and laugh, Travis. But uh, for now, it feels pretty good. It feels like that seems like where things are heading. Hopefully, you'll learn something from this. Like I said before, too, if you haven't watched our uh, other video where we kind of dove deeper into the technology players and some of the um, where they're coming from and, and uh, what some of the strengths and weaknesses are in those categories, check that out. Thanks for watching and have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.